Of all the different capital budgeting techniques, the payback period is by far the easiest to compute, and it's actually quite intuitive. And so what the payback period is looks at is the amount of time that's required in order to generate enough cash flow to pay for the initial cost of the investment. So it's, it's easy by looking at an example here. So in this case, we happen to have a project that costs $50,000. That's why we have a negative cash flow in year zero. In year one, uh, it returns $30,000. In year two, it returns $10,000. Year three, $20,000. And year four, $50,000. So if you look, after one year, we've recouped $30,000 out of the $15,000. I'm sorry, out of the $50,000. So you could do it this way. You could take $50,000. All right, and you're going to subtract the 30,000. So we're now we're down to 20,000. Okay, in year two, we get another 10,000. So we've already gone two periods. And we still, we still have $10,000 to go. Now, the last year, we're going to earn more than we actually need to pay off this uh, to recoup the cost. And how much or what fraction of a year is it? Well, I made up a, a relatively simple example, right? We have $10,000 we need to we need to earn, okay, or 10,000 in cash flow, and we divide it by the 20,000. So that equals 0.5. So it's half a year. So essentially, it's going to take us two and a half years to recoup our cost. Now, one thing that's really nice about the payback period is it's very simple to calculate. We didn't do anything complicated here. I think you can look, and most people, even without much um, uh, much instruction, would figure out that it's two and a half years. The problem with the payback period is that it doesn't account for a lot of the things that we, we said were necessary for a good capital budgeting technique. It doesn't consider all the cash flows. After, the, after half a year, we ignore this cash flow. We ignore the rest of the cash flows. Year four has a good cash flow, 50,000. In fact, I could have made it even more extreme. I could have made it 1,050,000. And you would be ignoring that simply because we've met our payback, uh, payback period criteria. Okay, so that's, that's a problem. Okay. It doesn't consider the time value of money. We didn't take present value of anything, and so the 20000 in year three is not worth 20000 to us in year zero. The 30000 in year one is not worth 30000 to us in year zero. We need to take the present value of that. So that's another problem with this. We didn't adjust for risk. We don't know if this is a risky project or not a risky project, but there's no way you can, you can see any risk being incorporated into this. You could rank projects, okay, so it meets that criteria where we said it has a shorter payback period than some other projects, so it meets that criteria. And it gives us no idea of how much value is added to the firm. So there are a lot of problems with the payback period as a primary tool for evaluating projects. Now, keep in mind that Corporate finance managers may look at several different tools for evaluating a project, and payback period might be one that they would want to consider, although it shouldn't be their primary tool for evaluating a project. But the nice thing about payback period, it's very easy to do. It does work well for some things. For example, if you're refinancing your mortgage and you're, it's costing you $2,000 to refinance your mortgage, and you're saving $200 a month, well, you're going to get your money back in 10 months. And because it's such a short period, that's probably, it's probably not unreasonable to ignore time value of money. Okay, you still should account for it, but that's probably a reasonable tool for evaluating whether you should refinance or not. Uh, I'm, I'm only going to live here another five years, Okay, if I can't pay it back in, in, you know, in a year or so, then I'm not going to refinance. So it's, it's reasonable for that, 
but probably not a good method for a long-term project like this.